over a century before the Battle of Yavin, the Bith male Rujas Nome stood as master of the Sith Order and heir to a nearly 900-year-old legacy initiated by Darth Bane. In accordance with their rule of two philosophy, Darth Tenebris was required to train an apprentice who he might one day engage in a fight to the death so that only the strongest would survive. Yet after centuries of adhering to this tradition, Tenebris believed that its usefulness was at an end, as he'd foreseen the coming of the Chosen One, a being of enormous potential in the Force, who would destroy the established order so that the rule of one Sith could emerge. With that in mind, Tenebris made it his goal to keep his consciousness alive long enough to inhabit the body of the Chosen One, so he might rule forever as the One Sith. Tenebris created his own variation of essence transfer to achieve immortality, injecting himself with a retrovirus to turn midichlorians into maxichlorians, designed to survive the death of his body so he might transfer his consciousness into a new host. However, as a side effect of this procedure, Tenebris lost his foresight ability, which mattered little to him as Bith science could also be used to predict the future. In order to ensure that his eventual host body was strong in the Force and worthy of a Sith Lord, Tenebris arranged for two Force-sensitive Munes to mate and have a child they named Higo Damask II. At a young age, Tenebris took the boy, naming him Darth Plagueis, and raised him as a Dark Lord of the Sith. The child proved strong in the Force and demonstrated a malevolent spirit even before being taken away from his parents, having used his powers to convince a playmate he disliked into committing suicide. In order to continue to make use of the boy's father, Car Damask, Tenebris helped him climb the ranks of the intergalactic banking clan, bringing him wealth and influence. Meanwhile, Tenebris trained Plagueis in the dark side of the Force, and together worked from the shadows to destabilize the Republic, in accordance with the greater goal of the Sith, which ultimately strove to destroy the Jedi Order and rule over the galaxy. Yet the training given to Plagueis was basic and limited, as in the end he was only meant to be a host body for his master. However, Tenebris did encourage his natural abilities in midichlorian manipulation, and subtly instilled in him a rampant fear of death. In this way, the apprentice might become distracted in these pursuits, keeping him from gaining a deeper understanding of the Force. In addition, this path would ensure that Plagueis stayed near his master's body upon his death to study his midichlorians, thereby giving the Bith the opportunity to transfer his consciousness into the new host. Even the Mune's name reflected the greater plan, as Plagueis meant diseased one, a reference to his unhealthy obsession with death and using midichlorians to achieve immortality. And yet, despite his master's plan, the apprentice proved ambitious and brilliant, teaching himself a great deal and secretly developing his force powers far beyond what Tenebris intended. Throughout their time together, master and apprentice developed many differing views, with Tenebris seeing the force as a source of energy and enjoying lightsaber combat as well as direct confrontation, while Plagueis saw the force as an investment for future profits and was bored by direct combat, instead preferring to use cunning and manipulation from the shadows. After many years serving his master, Plagueis was at last ordered to commit his first assassination using telekinetic strangulation to kill Carid Santh, a wealthy industrialist who made an enemy of Tenebris by cutting him out of a lucrative business deal. After the death of his father, Plagueis inherited the wealth and influence of the Damask family, using his newly acquired status to further the ambitions of the Sith by creating division between the impoverished and neglected worlds of the Outer Rim and the prosperous inner planets where many lived in relative luxury. Yet as the years went on, Tenebris grew increasingly disappointed in Plagueis, who he thought weak and unwilling to attempt killing his master, as Sith tradition demanded. Tenebris did not fear the death of his body, as he had prepared for this eventuality, and so he began training a new apprentice in secret, naming him Darth Venomous, in the hopes he might prove stronger and more capable than Plagueis. However, Tenebris had misjudged the situation, and in 67 BBY, while investigating a cortosis deposit on Bal Demnik, Plagueis arranged for a gas explosion to occur, and used the distraction to bring down the roof of the cave upon his master. Before he died, Tenebris congratulated his apprentice for the clever plan and was soon knocked unconscious, giving Plagueis the opportunity to observe how the midichlorians left his body. Doing exactly as expected, Tenebris enacted his plan for immortality, using Maxichlorians to transfer his consciousness into his apprentice. Yet as he entered the new host, he saw a powerful vision foreseeing the eventual death of Plagueis before he met the Chosen One, thereby dashing his plans to inhabit the boy's body. Panicked, the Bith's consciousness fled the host, becoming trapped within the walls of the cave, repeating his last moments in an unending loop. 
As this occurred, Tenebris came to the realization that by using this method to transfer his consciousness, he infected his apprentice with Maxichlorians, thereby limiting his ability to see into the future. This in turn would contribute to the eventual failure of Plagueis to foresee betrayal by his own apprentice, meaning the ultimate defeat of the Bith Dark Lord was self-inflicted. With his ship partially destroyed in the explosion, Plagueis made his way to a nearby city and snuck aboard the Woebegone, where he killed the crew but spared their 114D droid who served him from that day forward. As the new master of the Sith, Plagueis soon faced a challenge from Darth Venomous, defeating the potential Dark Lord and capturing him for experimentation. From Venomous, he acquired a list of Force-sensitive individuals being considered for apprenticeship, and so Plagueis went out to find and eliminate these would-be rivals. Secure in his status, the Sith Lord continued his efforts to destabilize the galaxy, focusing on the mid-rim planet of Naboo, where their recently discovered plasma reserve had divided the government, with some conservatives wanting to keep this resource for themselves, while the more liberal faction wished to use it to attract investors and join the galactic community. During his time on Naboo, where all knew him as Higo Damask, the Sith Lord met and befriended a young Force-sensitive man named Sheev Palpatine, who served as a spy for the Liberal faction, acting against the interests of his own family, who were allied with the Conservatives. As Plagueis got to know the young man, he was impressed by his intelligence, ambition, and ruthlessness, and decided to take him on as an apprentice. Manipulating events to further estrange him from his parents, the Sith Master told Palpatine a story about how he killed his own half-brothers and sisters in order to inherit his father's fortune. Although this story was only partially true, it helped convince the apprentice to murder his entire family after a heated argument with his father. Having proven his commitment, Plagueis accepted Palpatine into the Sith Order and named him Darth Sidious. Yet, much like his predecessor, Plagueis did not intend to train his own replacement and informed the young Sith that the Rule of Two tradition was over and that their new goal was to complete the destruction of the Jedi so they might rule the galaxy together. Though he did not reveal the entirety of his plan with his apprentice, Plagueis intended to achieve immortality not through the transfer of consciousness as other Sith had attempted, but through direct midichlorian manipulation in order to preserve both his body and mind forever. Over the next few years, Plagueis trained Sidious in the dark side, making him earn his abilities through pain, suffering, and intensive study, sharing with him a collection of holocrons from Sith Lords of the past. Meanwhile, Plagueis helped him rise through the political ranks until 52 BBY, when the apprentice was ordered to arrange the death of Vidar Kim so he might be elected as his replacement in the Galactic Senate. With both Dark Lords in positions of power and influence, they worked together to undermine the Republic, furthering the grand plan of destroying the Jedi and ruling the galaxy. After making contact with the Kaminoans, Plagueis inquired about their cloning facilities before attending a meeting on Sereno where he spoke to Count Dooku and Sifo Diaz of the Jedi Order, suggesting that the growing rift between inner and outer planets might one day lead to civil war. Although his original goal was to create a clone army to fight his enemies, Plagueis soon realized that they should instead fight alongside the Jedi and gain their trust in order to one day betray them and bring down the entire Order. During a vote to add a number of Senate seats for client worlds of the Trade Federation, Palpatine was ordered to abstain on behalf of Naboo, tipping the scales in favor of their Sith allies. However, when Senator Pak's team, who opposed the bill, learned of Palpatine's connection to Higo Damask, he attempted to kidnap the apprentice. Plagueis, aware of these plans, sent his own people to rescue Sidious, but failed to anticipate a second team of Maladian assassins sent against him directly, which left the leadership of Damask Holdings all dead, save for the Dark Lord who was badly injured. Having felt through the dark side that his master was in pain, Sidious rushed to his side before going on a rampage in retribution, killing Senator Team and all those nearby. Now wearing a transpirator to help him breathe, Plagueis was disturbed by the attempt on his life and decided to retreat from public life, calling a meeting with Sidious, where he at last divulged the true nature of his research and his plans to use midichlorian manipulation to preserve their bodies and minds to achieve immortality. And so while Palpatine was left with the responsibility of manipulating galactic events towards the destruction of the Jedi, Plagueis spent the next 20 years in relative solitude studying midichlorians intensely. His obsession then yielded significant results as he learned much about the Force, gaining insight into extending life, reviving the dead, and even learned of essence transfer, the same technique Darth Bane had used to try and send his consciousness into his apprentice Darth Xana. 
However, Plagueis chose not to employ this method, as he believed midichlorian manipulation was superior, as it could preserve his physical form as well as his consciousness. When Plagueis traveled to Korriban to try and communicate with Sith spirits, he found nothing until the very end, when he was confronted by Marka Ragnos, who admonished him for abandoning the traditions of their homeworld. By 42 BBY, Plagueis was ready to demonstrate his new abilities, and so both Sidious and 114D were present when the Dark Side Master selected his still living test subject, Venomous, for one last experiment, using the Force to kill the creature and then revive him a number of times before he permanently passed away. Believing he was ready to take the next step, Plagueis then combined his powers with those of Sidious, and together they successfully reached out to the Force and shifted the balance towards the dark side, taking one more great step forward towards having the Sith rule over the galaxy. Confident in his new abilities, Plagueis then attempted another great project, this time reaching out to create a being of his own design out of pure Force energy. However, not only did he fail in his purpose, but his actions seemed to trigger a counter-strike, leaving Plagueis to believe that the Force itself was pushing back against his efforts. During his time absent from galactic events, Plagueis allowed Sidious to take on an apprentice of his own, training a Zabrak as a Sith assassin, and even naming him Darth Maul after passing a final test. By 33 BBY, the Sith were entering the final stages of their plan to gain control of the galaxy, orchestrating a war on Yinchor, designed to tarnish the reputation of Chancellor Valorum and undermine his support in the Senate. And while events were largely unfolding as he desired, Plagueis soon faced another attack against him when King Ars Faruna of Naboo, a former ally turned enemy, attempted to assassinate the Dark Lord on Sojourn. But Plagueis survived and tracked down Varuna, providing him a slow and painful death by eradicating his life force one midichlorian at a time. In 32 BBY, Higo Damask made a rare public appearance, attending a meeting on Coruscant, where he once again spoke to the Jedi Sifo Diaz, continuing the conversation started decades earlier to discuss the possibility of galactic war, but this time the Sith Lord was sure to mention the cloning facility on Kamino, even offering to finance the endeavor, thereby manipulating Sifo Diaz into contacting the Kaminoans and ordering the creation of a clone army. When all the pieces were in place, the Sith Lords at last triggered the Naboo Crisis, convincing their allies in the Trade Federation to blockade the planet of Naboo in protest of the recent taxes imposed upon free trade zones. During the ensuing crisis, the Chosen One Anakin Skywalker was found on the planet Tatooine and was taken in by the Jedi, tested to have an extraordinarily high midichlorian count of 20,000. Plagueis soon concluded that this child may be the result of the Force pushing back against the Sith Lord's attempt to create life nine years earlier. Fearing that the boy may represent the undoing of the Sith Grand Plan, Plagueis could not allow him to be trained by the Jedi, sending Darth Maul to kill the child's potential masters, Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi. In the end, the Naboo Crisis had been a great political victory for the Sith, as it allowed Senator Palpatine to bring down Chancellor Finnis Valorum and set himself up to be chosen as his replacement. On the night before the election, when Palpatine's victory was guaranteed, Plagueis met with his apprentice in a private meeting to celebrate their achievement. With Sidious as Supreme Chancellor of the Republic, and Plagueis soon to be named as Co-Chancellor, the Sith would rule the galaxy and be in a perfect position to finally destroy the Jedi Order. However, like many Dark Side apprentices before him, Darth Sidious was not content to share power, and so got his master drunk and launched a savage Force lightning attack upon him while he slept. As Plagueis died, Sidious went on a tirade, revealing that he was the true master of the Sith, who had been enacting his own plan from the very beginning, listing out all of his master's weaknesses and failures, pointing out that his death was assured the moment he chose Palpatine as his apprentice. Plagueis quickly became aware of what was happening, but he had grown so arrogant concerning his powers that he made no attempt to defend himself, instead trying to use midichlorian manipulation to reverse the damage being done to his body. But he was too weak and could not keep pace, eventually succumbing to the attack and losing his life. Though Sidious was elated with his success, at the same time he felt a disturbance in the dark side, later learning that while he was claiming the mantle of Master, his own apprentice Darth Maul was seemingly killed in battle with the Jedi. The next day, Sheev Palpatine was elected as Supreme Chancellor of the Galactic Republic. Although he believed Plagueis had outlived his usefulness, Sidious had a certain respect for his Sith Master that stayed with him throughout his life, including his name in the Book of the Sith as one of the Dark Lords to have played a pivotal role in advancing the Grand Plan. 
He even used the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise to help lure the Chosen One, Anakin Skywalker, to the dark side by revealing that his master had actually gained the ability to control life and death through his studies of the Force. Love audiobooks? Then be sure to check out Audible, where they have the world's largest collection available. Simply sign up through the link in the description box below and get two free audiobooks to start out. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Christ Walder, The Crimson Shadow, Knight of the Old Republic, Ryanon, Tormus Woods Whisper, and Glegnis, Son of Vorin. If you'd like to help Civilization X, click on the Patreon link, and please be sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and click on the links to see more.